I think it became pretty clear when I started having these experiences that I was very interested in what was happening. It wasn't anything I was learning about in classes at the University of Michigan or anywhere else about uh, mushroom experiences, the nature of consciousness, nature of reality, those different types of things. My grandpa was a mortician, so I was uh, constantly around sort of the, the business of death, if you will, seeing kind of people uh, grieving and, and sort of lost, but also the, the, the process of a body, human body, and the spirit, and all these different types of things that was really prevalent in my early years. I come from a Finnish ancestry, so we did a lot of work with uh, saunas, so we do this sort of heat in the sauna and then cold, cold plunge into the ice lake uh, in Michigan where I was living at the time. Uh, and that sort of really was the first opportunity for me to see the direct connection between nature and altered states of consciousness. Came across um, somebody in college that uh, introduced me to mushrooms and they really uh, showed me um, sort of the way to look at these as sort of an inner experience, really looking at this from the close your eyes, have these visions go inward. My dissertation research came probably about four or five years after when I came across ayahuasca. And obviously through this whole process, there is the injustice of the fact that these are criminalized. But I never really knew that this would be part of my process until late 2018 when we all met together and we said, hey, we can do this here in Oakland. And so previous to that, I had never had any kind of policy or politics or talking with city council members. It was totally brand new to me. One of the things that we really focus on with decriminalization is sort of equitable access. We know that these big companies are out there, these billion dollar companies, big pharma, all these other companies, venture capital is really trying to get on this. We can't stop that necessarily. But what's one thing that we can do? Well, if we can teach everyone to grow their own, if we can teach everyone to have, you know, collectives or communities where they know about where the medicine's coming from, you know, how to sort of engage with it, uh, how to produce it, all that type of thing, then those big corporations are gonna have a lot more trouble monopolizing or taking over everything. If it's not decriminalized, then it's easy because you can say, well, that's an illicit grower. Well, there's nothing illicit about growing a plant, right? It's just growing a plant.